Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. Welcome to Classroom Connections. Today's guest, I'm really, really excited about having her. She's uh, an author, she's an illustrator, and you really don't find that combination. She doesn't think it's that unique, but I think it's absolutely fabulous and very unique. Deborah Friedman, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you here. You have a couple of books published, but before to them, I when we talked in our pre-interview, I understand that you started writing children's books with your own children. Could you tell me a little bit about that, please? Yeah, well, um, I first got into it when my when my children were babies, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I started making them little books, uh, little personal things, and as they got older, um, they'd make up songs or rhymes or something like that and I made little books for them and I, I found one of them um, and I couldn't find all of them. It was terrible. They've got them squirreled away somewhere I think. Um, but this one was Dickory Dock, the mouse ran up the clock and then my daughter would say Hickory Dickory Dock, the mouse went to a restaurant. You know? <laughs> and so it's so silly and so personal and no one else would get it or even appreciate it but I made the, made these books for them, and um, so that's what I did. I started making these little well, tiny books. I think that's so interesting that you did that. because Now, it, this is very stiff. What did you use for the book cover? Um, I think that's just some cardboard under there, and then I covered it with fabric. Fabric, and, and then you probably just glued it. Yeah. And, um, and then you have the work. You have the the illustrations, mm -hmm. but what I think is very it's amazing that you did this before they started promoting this in the school systems to be a published author for children. That's that's one thing they used to do. Yeah. But they also it got your children involved and they started writing their own material. And why is this a good lesson for parents? working, uh, who are extremely busy nowadays, probably working a job and having the children. How yeah. can this help the child in school? What's your take on that? Well, I'm no expert, you know. I just do this um, for myself, but I, I know um, when the girls got old enough, they did like to do their own books, and so we'd all sit in the kitchen side by side, and, and I was lucky that my kids had a similar temperament. You know, mm -hmm. We all had the ki same kind of, we, they like to sit and draw. Um, and I do my books and they do their books and I'd help them spell out the words. And um, that whole process is just so creative. I think especially if you'll sit down and draw with them, they, you know, and model that. Well, I it's think that's, really special. Yes, I think that's key too, is that you sat with them, you just didn't you know, say go in the kitchen and draw and make a book and because they're kind of bewildered and don't know what to do, but you're actually modeling the behavior for the child. Some of the time, of course, sometimes I was cooking dinner and just <laughs> spelling out words, but, but you know, there we were in the kitchen so doing that, all that. That's real. I think that's really wonderful. And so being available, cooking dinner while they're working with you. And having materials. I mean, I oh, think. That's a good point. Probably most pet, but just making sure there are always plenty of materials around, even if it's just scraps of old paper and markers or crayons or whatever. Um, but making sure there's plenty for them to draw with and on. Well, that's that's a good point because if they don't, ha if they're if the materials are scarce, then and every paper has to be used to its fullest, then then that can hinder the creativity. But parents can recycle yes. bags of letters. Sure. And, and, and Anything. Have a, yes. And, uh, bags from the grocery store. Sure. And they can do that. So modeling behavior is very, very important. It kind of goes into reading. If you tell your child to read and they don't see you reading, right? That is, it's a huge, huge issue. And reading with them is, yes. Yes. you know, even better because... Well, it's just such such special time to spend. It is. It is. It brings up another point. In your family, you had a very or you a very famous aunt. And who was your aunt? My aunt is Marianne Hoberman, and she's a past children's poet laureate. And she's done, gee, I've lost count, between forty and fifty books for kids. Um, started in the fifties, and she's still writing them now. And I just brought a couple of my favorites from her very first books, which um, my uncle illustrated. Really? Yes. He just illustrated the first few. He was an, arch he was an architect and an artist. And, wow. Um, 
they're so special to me, and uh, my brother and sister and I just loved these books growing up. Oh, absolutely. So. And you mentioned she was a children's poor, poor poet laureate. What does that mean exactly? Well, she is a poet. She, she did collections of children's poetry, and then her other books are in almost, I think almost every one of them is in verse. Um, so she, as poet laureate, she traveled all around the country visiting schools and other places talking about the importance of poetry and reading poetry to and with children and having them write and memorize mm -hmm. poetry. What a, what a great experience you to yeah. have someone like that in the family. Oh, yeah. What kind of influence do you think she had on your writing? Oh, tons. For, for one thing, um, she, I just had a model there. Mm -hmm. My aunt and my uncle, I knew people, real people who actually yes. made books. Yeah. Um, but also, uh, she writes in verse more than just that the words rhyme. She has, um, she uses language in such a joyful way, um, such wordplay. And I think I really, um, I, I think that's just influenced me a lot the fun you can have with words and writing. Yes, and, and it is fun. I, and I oh, think yeah. sometimes in schools, the fun of everything, yeah. that's, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. um, now, your first, not, not your first book, we'll get to your first book later, but your current book that this was just published is Blue Chicken. And I don't know if the uh, my director, Doug, has a copy of on the JPEG, if he's ready for that. But... Uh, well, you know what? We won't even bother with that at this point, but I'll just, just use up. the cover. Um, Blue Chicken, tell me a little bit about this book. Well, it was actually um, it sparked by poetry, um, since we're talking about mm -hmm. verse and poetry. Um, one day I was sitting at my, I was trying to brainstorm ideas, and sometimes what I do is I look at art or I read poetry. And I was reading William Carlos Williams' poem, The Red Wheelbarrow. Yes. You know, so much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. Uh, you know, such a um, very short but loaded poem and so open to interpretation. And um, I was just sitting there thinking, hmm, so where does this take place? Are there other animals? Are there other colors? What happens? What mm -hmm. happens next? And um, ah, I know it's a color book. You know, mm. we have red wheelbarrow, white chickens, and a pot of blue paint. <laughs> oh, now that's interesting. So that's what was the first idea that got it going. Now, as an illustrator and writer, because many times just a, a writer uh, comes up with the words, is it more difficult, do you think, to do both? Or do you think one help, one is supports the other or not? Well, I always tell kids that I write with words and pictures. Oh, I really cool. tell the story with both the words and the pictures, and it's really just a juggling act. You no, know, um, I don't have to say certain things because I can tell things in the pictures, you know, emotions, say, in my characters. I don't really have to describe them because you can see them or other things like yes, that. I don't have to describe all kinds of things because you can see them so well in the in the. And things. when you open up this book, um, you come to... It, you almost come at the in, in there's a sense at last. So it's like, okay, mm -hmm. well, what happened all before this? Mm -hmm. but would you um, care to read? Actually, why don't you use your copy of the book, okay. the first page for us? And sure. I'm gonna, you'll show it while I read to the camera. But it, it's hard for the camera to do a real tight close up in okay. on this. But this is, um, let me just see how I can do this. Here we go. Um, Got it? It's just opposite of what I'm doing, yes. Okay. Okay, so if you could read that, please. At last, this picture is almost finished. These are white, their coop is brown, and this day is perfect for painting the barn. So now you've set up what they're going to be doing mm -hmm. is uh, painting the barn. And then yeah. we now, and we have a sense of place, and then what happens? But wait, does one of the chickens want to help? Ah. Instead of the barn, she's painting herself. Wow. Now now we have the problem. And mm -hmm. the colors the are absolutely vibrant when you look at the image on this. Would you mind reading a little bit more? Sure. She's toppled the blue. And the spilled blue is spreading till the ground grows blue, too. 
more of a problem. Mm -hmm. And you can see that when you, you can read the pit, I'm just gonna go down a little bit. You can read the words and also read the picture along with, mm -hmm. that's what parents and moms can do and discuss the color. Yes. And she's seeing her reflection in there. Excellent. Yeah. All right, and what, do you mind if we just read the book? Sure. Okay. Okay. Once purple pansies, now bloom blue. Blue yellow ducklings splatter the cat. Ah, uh, the cat. We had a conversation about this. Is a cat always in your books? Actually, um, he, I guess so. I went before I started the art for my first book, Scribble. We adopted a kitten, and um, let me hold this as a camera. camera. That, he's a, but that's what he looked like when oh, we first adopted cute. him. And so in Scribble, he's on just about every page. And what's this cat's name? Milo. Oh, how, and what a, who took the picture? It's a great picture. I think I did, but I don't remember. Oh, what a <laughs> great picture. What a great, great picture. So we're going to, I probably okay. should have introduced But so now <laughs> we're okay. going to go back to the text. Okay. So blue, yellow ducklings splatter the cat. A moo wakes the chickens. They're peevish and blue. They dump the red wheelbarrow, dropping that chicken who jaunted to... Help! Now this sets up an interesting conversation. Is the, and the conversation can either be with parents or with teachers is the intention was good. Eight. But the result didn't work out. No. <laughs> I love your facial expression. <laughs> just wanted to help, but it just didn't work. Right. Oh, so what do you do? So, what do you do? But the chicken is sorry, sincerely sorry. And that's probably always very true. Yes. Maybe the chicken can undo the blue. Oh, and what I like about this is now the chicken with none, no bad intentions problem and now is going to try to fix the problem. That's huge in the development of a child. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. Hmm. And this is a point where parents can ask a child, what do you think is going to happen? And make predictions. And now you can read the pictures where mm -hmm. the children can identify the animals. They can identify what's kind of going on over here. And they can say, well, why is the chicken going to another cup? And they can add the words in the conversation. And that's so critical for, when ch for young children to get the conversations and interact between the, whoever's reading this book to them and the child. That's, yes. that's, very, that's very, very good. Look, no more blue. And everybody is looking happy. And then they can discuss how that happened. Except for the sky. What a nice story. There's still more, though. The sky should stay blue on a morning so on a day that is perfect. For painting the barn. And you bring us full circle to yes. go back to paint the barn. And then we have one more little bit Ooh, on the I end. Forgot. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> now what I really love about this is there's so much for a parent to talk about. And I also want to just read the back of this uh, cover. And I think many times people forget this, is if you open up the back cover, the continues on both sides of the cover. Yes, Was that's that... true. Not, not everyone looks at the back of the book, but we had fun with it anyway. And you were aware of that, and you did that intentionally. Yeah, I mean, you can't have it so that people have to look at it, because a lot of times people don't notice it. But, yeah, they don't notice but it, funny. but if, if once they're aware that Many times the, it's a continuation of the story. Yes. Or sometimes it could be the end 
what happens in the story, you can predict what happens. I think if they're aware of it, they might start checking it out. It was very yeah. interesting with this particular book. I went to a lecture um, given by the Eric Carlisle Museum, I'd say about a month ago. Uh -huh. They were in New Haven, and your book was one of the books that they talked about mm. and brought my attention to the fact of looking at the back covers. So this this is really a phenomenal book, and and not just me. It's talking yeah. about, they're, they're, and they're a, a renowned uh, studio uh, museum up in Massachusetts and also renowned people. Now, what I also like about your website is that you have activities for parents to do to follow up this. What are some activities that go along with this? Well, I do hope to have, um, right now I do have drawing pages because um, what I'm hoping, the ending is I've left a little bit open to interpretation, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so sometimes when I go to schools, I'll, I'll finish reading it and I'll show them that last thing with the, the red paint and kids will say, are you a sequel? Are you writing Red Chicken? And I always say, well, you write the sequel. What do you think oh. happens next? So that's the main thing I would love if kids wrote their own stories. And um, the drawing pages that I have on my website are mostly just to try to jumpstart that kind of ima imaginative what, storytelling. What a great idea, but I have to follow up with that. Are yep. you writing a sequel? Are you writing I, a red chicken? I am not. You're I am not. writing a book about a fish, but that's all I'm going to say about what I'm writing next. So the children haven't they convinced you. They have to write you. their own book. Oh, that is so interesting. And what I also like is that on on your website, it's so easy for someone who's not computer proficient to know where to click because you say click here. <laughs> and I yes. click here. Oh, okay, click here. here yeah. Debbie. <laughs> yeah. Click, and I'm not, we need it. Click here and then download to someone today. And she goes, she just barely gets by on the computer with the skin of her teeth. Um. And she's a grandma. And so she needs the click here. And when the kids come to uh. visit, she knows how to be prepared. Well, that's good to know. I don't like fancy websites. So, well, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't know where to click. That is very, very helpful. And um, so there's dra there's drawing papers. You didn't bring a copy of one of the drawing sheets, right? Oh, she I has? did. Yes, I did. So I can just so it basically um, it almost reminds. Here's the barn. Yes, here's the barn. So um, I can't what I wrote on the site, but something about um, what if you had this on your desk and and your characters came to life and wreaked havoc with your picture what would they do so that's interesting. giving them a starting point there. and um it doesn't really show up on the camera because no. of the lightness of it but it's a basic i was just going to use my pen this is a picture of a simple bar mm -hmm. and what you're allowing people to do children to do add anything you want yes whatever and animals you want and that's not often not the case with a lot of toys where the toy does everything for you. Or even a, a typical coloring page. Yeah, yeah that is, that's true too. Yeah. So I, I like that. And what is this? And this is just um, the, the paint pots and water jar from my illustration and just so that they can maybe take that last scene and, and make their own and, and sequel. You did, and you didn't, um, th this does happen, you didn't give them color. So you no. let the child make that decision. Mm -hmm. Also, I think can see where adults would enjoy doing this. Oh, that would yes. be nice if you know, they did it side by side. Side by I would side, like that. you know, with the child, with the child, and this is a wonderful activity to do indoors. Mm -hmm. And I just growing as activities to do in the house with the children. Very, very nice. Another thing I want, I'm hoping to get on my website, which I haven't done. When I go to school, sometimes I demonstrate how I did all the splashing. Um, for the cover, um, because I've done this as a workshop as well, uh, doing drops of paint and then blowing through a straw. And so playing with materials that way, that's a lot of fun. Kids have a lot of fun doing that. Oh. So um, Kids and, would enjoy that. Yeah. It's, it's pretty fun. You can blow through a straw if you change the angle or the, the power of your blow. It, do, it does all different kinds of things. And that's how you did this? Um, that's partly how I did it. I did. Uh, I blew through a straw. I also had a, um, a pipette, and I squirted paint out of it so that it kind of went like that. Um, I took a toothbrush and went like this with a toothbrush to get that finer spray and just a paintbrush, you know.
for the big you know, squatches. I find that amazing because uh, a pipette, for those who, who wouldn't have it at home, you could use maybe use an eyedropper. Yeah. And um, the only reason I know what it is is we used class when I was right. teaching. And, you know, you learn a lot in school. Well, a dropper, if you can, yeah. Yeah, squeeze it. Yeah. Maybe, or even maybe, I, or something that you can squeeze out that mm -hmm. well, I'm not... I'm even thinking a straw. But the point. straw does very nicely if you have a big blob of paint and you mm -hmm. blow it, it can make But that nice. would also be to take find things around the house that can spray, like a toothbrush mm -hmm. and what things could give you a sponge, something that could give yeah. you interesting effects. And it's all process of discovery. Yes, there's no playing right. and getting a feel for the material. Yes, that, that, that's a it's wonderful fun. idea. Yeah. And that would be a lot of fun to do. That would it's just be very a lot of fun. fun. Yes, a lot of <laughs> it fun. It can do. be messy, but messy if is parent, good. I think it's good. Yeah, messy is good. Now, your first book is um, actually is what we have for our backdrop. Very, yes. very yellow, very graphic. Mm -hmm. It's called Scribble. I particularly liked Scribble, even though it was your first book, uh, and I love Blue Chicken. But what I liked about this particular book was that um, it's how children are. Mm -hmm. that they um, sometimes can do mean things. They can. And how to solve that problem. And you give an interesting uh, solution to that and how it feels. How did this book come about? Well, there are a couple different things. One is um, I've talked about my girls, uh, Emma and Lucy, and, and the characters are named for them, but it's not a true story. They mm -hmm. always want me to tell people it's not a they're actually much nicer than the girls in the book but I always say if I wrote a book about the way you really were it would be boring <laughs> <laughs> so um, but you know we talked about how they used to love to draw and so um, when they were little they were making those before they even started mix they'd make pictures that had stories you know story behind the mm. picture and they'd bring the picture to me and they'd say we write this down at the bottom of the picture you know this is a kitty cat princess and she's eating cake and having a picnic and we write that down um, and they love to draw cats mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. so I have stacks of pictures like that and so I just had this idea um, what if I wrote a story about two sisters who love to draw and the story behind their drawings and so um, when they were really little I actually took their drawings and photocopied them and doodled around them and tried to make a book out of their drawings Wow! but that didn't really after playing with that for a couple years, actually, it was limiting me. I realized I had to do the, the kids' drawings myself. Um, but I guess I'd spent so much time looking at their drawings that I finally managed to do it. So your children so, educated you. They, you know, you yes. went to all these schools and, they, and you right. have it from your children. Well, you know, kids' drawings are just... There's something Magical. so expressive about them. Yes, you yes. Know, so there's trying a, to catch there's that. an honesty to them. There's yes. a cleanness to them. Yes. And many parents, many times, will frame it and put it on the wall, and it looks and it looks fabulous. It does. You know, and I and I always treasured when children drew me pictures, and I it's just they're just very very precious. Oh, I know. I love it when kids send me pictures. That's do just they the really? Best. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. I just love that. So this story is. Um, is about, now is that a real picture from a That is a real picture that my daughter Emma drew oh, of I have me. To, I have to show you at the back. I know, you probably you have to pick probably up the book. Probably can't see it. But um, I think we are getting a little bit on it right Can here. Can you see it? This is, and it looks exactly like you. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. This is a picture. And it's old. Yeah. I still look like that? You do. Well, your body's a little, <clears throat> your legs are a little bit more underneath the body. But, you know, and what, what is the, the fun part is, is how they perceive you. Yeah. You know, and, um, I know. and when, and children do that, it's, it's really a fun part. Yeah. Is there a, how do you have a solution to the problem here? The solution. Well, the, the girls argue in the book. And, um, well, actually, I, I, I just want to add that um, my girls never, it, it's about a sister who scribbles on her sister's drawing, which mm -hmm. we know is a bad thing to do. Um, talk to kids, I always tell them, you know, my, my girls never actually did that, and I never did that, but once I got so angry at my sister that I poured ketchup on her head. <gasps> so um, I always tell them that the story is not literally true, but the emotions are true. Yes. The feelings in it are true. Um, you know, when you're angry that, well, there was no resolution, to, you know, really, when I dumped the ketchup on my sister's head. But in this book, um, 
uh, the sister Lucy runs away with her drawing, and, and the, the drawings fall in love. Isn't that yeah. sweet? So the, that the is sisters so sweet. fight, drawings fall in love. So there's so, hope for this. This is yes. so sweet. <laughs> and you also, have, um, you also have materials on your website for this. Yes. Activities. Yes. Is it the similar to what you have for blue chicken? Or? Well, it is. Um, and then there's uh, something that I do with kids, which, I, again, I don't have on my website. But um, I have drawing sheets kind of like this um, where I'm suggesting that you draw a friend for Scribble and Aurora, my two drawing characters. Oh, so that sort of thing, um, taking, taking my characters and adding and this is what kids seem to pick up the most often to draw on, and once in a while I see the results of that, and it's really fun. Well, you know, it's probably a little bit easier for them to draw this. And yes. But, um, also, that's also a nice way to interact, and they draw their friend, and you, and you can take off with their own book, too. Right. Oh, that is yeah. what, a, what a great opportunity when, when you go in and speak to schools. Great opportunity. Oh, I love it. Um, one of the things that I do sometimes when I'm... Um, talking about scribble is we'll create a scribble character together. We'll just, I'll have someone come up. It's, it's fun to do as a group, although kids can do it individually too. Um, and they'll, we'll just do a big scribble on a piece of paper and then I'll say, okay, somebody come up and add some eyes. And then someone else will come up and add some ears and a mouth. And as we add these little bits of this thing, it starts to develop a character and they're talking about the what it's like, and then at the end we give it a name. Um, if it could talk, what would it say? And then um, if children do that on their own, they have a character that they can build a story out of, and it's really a lot of fun. Oh, that does sound like a lot of fun. I've even done it with older kids, um, because it's a great way, you know, that fear of the blank page that we all have, mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. great way to deal with that. Just start with a scribble and see where it takes you. That does sound like a lot of fun. Yeah. We're almost out of time, so what, what is your website address? It's www.deborahfriedman.net. Okay, that's easy to remember. Mm -hmm. And to go to the website, even if you don't have the books, to go to the website and you can download the activity pages would be a mm -hmm. valuable thing for parents to to just learn and grow with their children. And then I would pick, love that. Yeah, and then pick up the books at the library if, if uh, or mm -hmm. to make great gifts, you know, at any time mm -hmm. of year. If you have any questions that um, you'd like to get back to me about or any comments, my website is www.classroomconnections365.com or you can email me at jmdteach at comcast.net. It was wonderful having you on the program today, and uh, you know, and you, I understand you have another book that you're not going to tell me about. <laughs> it's about a fish. Okay, it's fine. About a fish. <laughs> uh, but you know, when it's published, I hope you come back and talk again because I would love to. Phenomenal. I would love to. This has been a lot of fun. It has been. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.